Hey folks, it's Dave here with another video on Rocket Lab this time, and uh, I hope you've been having a great time in the stock market. I've really been enjoying the last few days. We've had a nice run in Rocket Lab stock, as well as some of the other stocks I've been holding have done quite well. So uh, feeling pretty good about things right now. And uh, today I just wanted to talk to you about why I think it makes a ton of sense for Rocket Lab's next-gen Neutron rocket to eventually launch some of Amazon's massive Kuiper constellation. So I'm going to go over that, my reasoning behind it, and why I think sometime in the future we're going to find ourselves as Rocket Lab shareholders with a massive contract on our hands for Amazon satellite launches. Before we get into that though, please do like and subscribe if you haven't already. It always helps out with the YouTube algorithm. Every subscriber is very much appreciated. And I am working with a sponsor, Main Street Data. The referral link is down in the description below. They do a lot of advanced charting for financial companies and stocks if you're interested in checking them out. Of course, if you do end up signing up, then you will uh, be supporting the channel as well. With that out of the way, let's dive into why I think Neutron is a perfect fit for Amazon's Kuiper Constellation. Now, I'm sure the majority of my viewers are very much familiar with Amazon's Kuiper project, but for those who aren't, I just wanted to start off by getting everyone on the same page, just give you a little overview of what Amazon's Kuiper is all about. Back in April of 2019, Amazon announced that they would fund and deploy a large broadband satellite internet constellation called Project Kuiper. It is expected to take up to a decade to deploy and will contain 3,236 satellites for the full constellation. This constellation will be Amazon's answer to SpaceX's Starlink and will be providing internet to tens of millions of people who lack basic internet connectivity. Amazon has not yet announced if they intend to sell this service directly to consumers, but they have said that they will offer the service through partnerships with other companies, so you can assume that they'll be working with various internet service providers across the globe. Then on January 30th of 2020, Amazon announced that they would be investing a $10 billion in the project after receiving authorization from the Federal Communications Commission for the Kuiper Constellation. A truly massive amount of money to be investing into a satellite constellation. Later on in December, Amazon unveiled their new Kuiper antenna, a low-cost flat panel antenna that it plans to use for the Kuiper satellite constellation. This antenna is much smaller than the designs for an traditional antennas that operate at similar frequencies and will be about 30 centimeters in width. Amazon also announced that they intend to be launch agnostic and would not exclusively use Jeff Bezos' Blue Origin, but were rather open to launch capacity from all providers. The satellites are projected to use an orbit with a height of between 590 and 630 kilometers above ground, and Kuiper is planned to work in concert with Amazon's previously announced network of 12 large ground stations, aka the AWS Ground Station Unit, which they announced back in November of 2018. So, why do I think that Rocket Lab's Neutron will ultimately end up launching a lot of these Amazon satellites? Well, I'll start with uh, Exhibit A, which is that we already know Rocket Lab is building some components for Amazon's Kuiper satellites. And we know this through a slip of the tongue. Peter Beck, I think he was supposed to keep this confidential, but he accidentally started mentioning the name at a recent interview. And it's pretty much an open secret now that this massive contract they have received for satellite reaction wheels will be for Amazon's Kuiper Constellation. Let's quickly go to the tape to show you how it played out. So it's a, it's a real core cool part of our business. And then if we look at our customers, um, a lot of our customers that, that fly an Electron are also you know, servicing the US government in, in defense in one way or the other. And then on the space system side, um, you know, obviously we have, uh, you know, we have probably a lot more commercial with respect to Constellation builds with the, with the, um, the Global Star contract and, and VADA and, and all the rest of it, but we still also have some, you know, some government stuff with the Mars missions. Uh, but across our kind of portfolio of, of uh, you know, of systems and, you know, we do a lot in the defense sector and a lot in the government. So. so all the way back when this big contract was announced, we were already, some of us in the community, speculating that there was a good chance this was for Amazon's Kuiper Constellation. Just going to take you through a few of the quotes about this massive contract that Rocket Lab has for satellite reaction wheels. 
So Rocket Lab CFO Adam Spice mentioned that the deal for these reaction wheels is worth thousands of reaction wheels per year, saying that we entered into an agreement with a mega constellation where it's thousands of reaction wheels per year and much bigger reaction wheels. He mentioned this at a recent aerospace and defense industrials conference. So first of all, that should give you one red flag because there's not a lot of mega constellations out there. I mean, if you say the word mega constellation, I basically think Starlink and Kuiper, that's it. So that was my first First hint that this was probably for Amazon. Continuing on at a next at a Bank of America event, he reiterated the enormity of the deal, saying that we secured a contract with the Mega Constellation customer where we'll ship two or three thousand reaction wheels per year to one customer. That's obviously just that contract alone for Rocket Lab is massive from the Space Systems Division. So uh, definitely a lot more volume than you see from most of the contracts they get. In its data sheet on these reaction wheels, Rocket Lab lists the base price as $100,000. Now, don't get too excited, though, because they're definitely discounting this for the large volume. Uh, they're definitely not charging $100,000 per reaction wheel. That would be an absolutely massive contract, but it still is very big. Spice actually acknowledged this as well at the conference, saying that the average selling price for the Mega Constellation reaction wheels came down quite a bit, but it's still a really big win for Rocket Lab's revenues. So that was the first bit of information to say that uh, we have already a working relationship between Rocket Lab and Amazon. But then we got confirmation from Peter Beck himself, and it definitely was accidental. I think this was supposed to remain confidential and he wasn't supposed to reveal this. It happens to the best of us. I always <laughs> make mistakes filming these myself, so uh, don't blame him at all. But now we do know that... Exhibit one, Rocket Lab already has a working relationship with Amazon, and there's no reason why that couldn't expand in the future. But now let's continue with more pieces of evidence. For our next piece of information here, this is actually the official order and authorization from the FCC granting Amazon basically permission to launch their Kuiper satellites into orbit. So you can see here that we grant subjects to conditions, the application of Kuiper systems for geostationary orbit, blah, 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 uh, satellite constellation. But the most interesting point I want to raise to your attention down on page 13 is right here. So yes, uh, they must post a surety bond, but 58B is really the big item here. So Kuiper must launch 50% of the maximum number of proposed space stations, aka satellites, which is 3,200 and something. So we're talking over 1,500 satellites. Place them in the assigned orbits and operate them in accordance with the station authorization no later than July 30th, 2026. And Kuiper must launch the remaining space stations necessary to complete its authorized service constellation, place them in their assigned orbits, and operate each of them in accordance with the authorization no later than July 20th, 2029. So Amazon is on a massive timer here. And if they do not meet that 50% number launched and being operated by July 30th, 2026, they will uh, lose their surety bond, but even more important, they will basically lose the right to continue launching the rest of those satellites and their constellation will be in massive trouble. They're basically, if they don't hit that 50% number by that deadline, they're done. And however many satellites they did get launched is just how big it will be unless they can come to some sort of other arrangement or a new license with the FCC. So it is absolutely uh, imperative for a Amazon to get these satellites launched before July 30th, 2026, at least half of them. And the remainder, they only have three more years to get the rest launched. So really not a lot of time to get all this up and running. A little while ago, it was a bombshell announcement that Amazon would be basically buying up the entire industry's 
free launch capacity of heavier lift vehicles. Let's go to a quick video of the announcement of this contract when we first heard about it. Amazon is calling Project Kuiper one of the largest commercial launch deals ever. It's got contracts for 83 launches with three different rocket companies, including Bezos's space baby, Blue Origin. The plan is to launch two satellites by the fourth quarter of this year. Can he beat Elon Musk and SpaceX, even though they're coming in from behind? So just to reiterate, this is the largest commercial launch deal ever. Amazon purchasing up to 83 launches from a variety of providers, including Ariane Space, Blue Origin, and United Launch Alliance to deploy most of its massive 3,000 plus satellite constellation. Just to share a few quotes from a representative from Amazon's Kuiper though, he did say securing launch capacity from multiple providers has been a key part of our strategy from day one. Clearly they're not just wanting to rely on a single provider. Saying that this approach reduces risk and uh, supports competitive long-term pricing. Now. Continuing on down below, we did have another interesting quote here saying Amazon has talked to every major launch provider and they will continue to explore all options for future launch services. So this isn't all the contracts are signed and they're done. They're clearly saying that they will continue to explore future options and they may sign additional launch contracts in the future. We also heard them say that they've spoken to every major launch provider. And to me, Rocket Lab is a major launch provider. The only problem being their Electron rocket is just too darn small for what Amazon has planned for their Kuiper constellation. So now that we know we're on a timeline, we know Rocket Lab already has a working relationship with Amazon and Amazon has already probably talked to Rocket Lab about launch at some point. Uh, let's go on to the actual launch contracts Amazon has already signed for this project and the rockets that are planned to launch th these satellites and why I think Neutron may have an opportunity here for a massive contract in the future. First up is the Atlas V rocket from United Launch Alliance. Amazon purchased nine launches on the Atlas V to send their Kuiper satellites into orbit. Now, the problem with this rocket is nine is the limit. There's going to be no more after these nine launches. The United Launch Alliance is moving on to their next generation Vulcan rocket, and there's simply no more Atlas Vs after this. But even if there was... What we've heard is that Atlas Vs tend to cost about 110 to $180 million per launch, and they would launch about 18,000 kilograms into low Earth orbit, making the price per kilogram somewhere around $8,055. Nevertheless, it doesn't really matter beyond those nine launches if Amazon needs more capacity, which they definitely will, because this rocket will not be available going forward. Next up is the ULA Vulcan Centaur rocket. Now, interestingly enough, one of the main reasons this rocket came into being is their original Atlas V rocket was using engines that were being developed by Russia, something that was increasingly becoming more and more untenable due to political tensions. And so it was decided that they really needed a new rocket using American engine. Eventually, ULA came to an agreement with Blue Origin to use their new BE-4 engines, the exact same engines that will be flying on Blue Origin's new Glenn rocket. The Vulcan Centaur has been in development for quite a while with the initial announcement going all the way back to 2015 with an initially targeted launch date of 2020. However, there was a delay announced due to a combination of technical challenges, engineering challenges, and the impact of COVID-19. These factors caused a delay slipping into 2021. Next up, there was another delay to 2022 as ULA revised the launch date to allow for more thorough testing and certification processes required by government agencies. Then once again, we had a revised schedule for 2023. The development timeline was further adjusted and the anticipated launch date of the Vulcan Centaur was shifted to 2023. These delays were attributed to the complexity of integrating new technologies and components and unforeseen technical challenges. 
There was also many delays from Blue Origin being ready to deliver their BE-4 engines for the Vulcan rocket. Those have finally now been delivered to ULA and the Centaur seemed to be on track for a launch this year. However, just recently there was an unfortunate explosion at the test stand for this rocket. A hydrogen leak allowed hydrogen to accumulate inside the rig, which found an ignition source and exploded the entire rig. According to CEO Tori Bruno, the initial launch of the Vulcan rocket is now likely to be delayed until at least June or July of this year, going by the history of this vehicle, likely much later than that. Back when ULA agreed to buy BE-4 engines from Blue Origin, owner Jeff Bezos was promising a relatively low-cost, high-performing engine with powerful output com comparable to the Space Shuttle main engine. At the time of the agreement, Blue Origin said the BE-4 would be ready for flight by 2017. However, due to many, many massive delays, the two first BE-4 engines were only delivered to ULA on October 31st, 2022. Now, Amazon has awarded a massive 38 launches to the Vulcan Centaur. The financial details of the agreement have not been disclosed, but it does appear the Vulcan Centaur is due to cost between $100 and $200 million per launch at 27,000 kilograms launched to low Earth orbit, making the cost per kilogram at 5,555. And this massive launch cadence is all relying on Blue Origin to get their BE-4 engines mass produce in a timely manner after years and years of delays, as well as United Launch Alliance being able to hit a cadence that is extremely ambitious for even a mature rocket and frankly unheard of for a brand new vehicle. Another factor with the Vulcan rocket is that it's planned at least initially to be completely expendable, meaning a new one will have to be built for every single launch of Amazon's Kuiper satellites. And as we can see, there's been all sorts of manufacturing problems with those Blue Origin BE-4 engines, and two of them will be needed for every launch. Now, there is a smart reuse concept that has been shared by ULA, where they basically recover the engines, bringing them down via parachute and nothing else. So that is some partial reusability that could happen in the future, but that would only be for the engines and it is probably still a long way out before we see even that being reused. The next contract Amazon awarded was for 18 launches for the Ariane 6 rocket. This rocket has never flown before and it has been subject to delays over and over again. All the way back in 2014, the design concept for the Ariane 6 was selected by the European Space Agency. Further high-level design was completed in 2015 and the vehicle entered the detailed design phase in 2016. In 2017, the ESA set the deadline for their first launch as July 2020. However, clearly this has not happened up to this point. Following several more de delays, Ariane Space has said that the first launch would occur in the fourth quarter of this year. However, industry watchers and experts are pretty much all convinced that we're not going to see this rocket fly at least until 2024 at the earliest. Even after getting their first launch off the ground, all new rockets take a long time to increase their cadence, get that mass manufacturing down, and as we've heard many times from Peter Beck, launching the 10th rocket is much more difficult than launching the first. Also, while this I am sure will be a fine rocket and Ariane 5 did launch the James Webb Space Telescope to its distant orbit, so it comes from a very reliable heritage. This new rocket many people believe is going to be out of date before it ever launches. It is completely expendable, there is no reusability whatsoever, and while they are trying to bring costs down from the Ariane 5 through different manufacturing techniques, the rocket will not be able to compete for cost against reusable options. As previously stated, Amazon has given a contract for 18 launches for the Ariane 6, 
The estimated price per launch is about $125 million, and the rocket is capable of launching 21,000 kilograms to low Earth orbit. This brings the cost per kilogram in at about $5,952 per kilogram. Significantly lower than the Atlas V, but still quite expensive in this day and age. The final rocket that Amazon has awarded launch contracts to so far is Blue Origin's own New Glenn rocket. Yet another launch vehicle that has never been seen or launched before. Now, the new Glenn is planned to be reusable, at least for the first stage initially, which is a point going in its favor. However, it has also been the subject of many delays, originally planning for first launch in 2020. The rocket has still yet to see the light of day today in 2023. In addition, this rocket is also planning to use Blue Origin's BE-4 engines, meaning that we have a single bottleneck between two different launch providers here for Amazon's Kuiper contract. If there are issues mass producing these BE-4 engines, it could impact the launch cadence of not only New Glenn from Blue Origin, but also Vulcan's Centaur rocket. And keep in mind that those engines have already been delayed many times, and Amazon is going to be desperate to get these launches off in order to get 50% of their Constellation launched by the deadline. New Glenn has been awarded 12 launches for Amazon's Kuiper with an optional 15 extra at a cost that has not been disclosed and we don't know how much the rocket will be launching for. So we really have no idea on the cost per kilogram on this rocket. So I know I've thrown a lot of information and numbers at you about different rockets in this video. So really just to make my argument in the most simple terms possible, basically what I'm saying is this. Amazon is on a massive timer in order to launch their Kuiper constellation of satellites over the next six years. They need to launch 1,500 satellites within three years and launch the remaining 1,500 plus in the next three years. To do this, they have contracted four different rockets, one of which is going offline, and then the other three have never launched before. Of those three, two rockets are sharing their engines, meaning we have a massive bottleneck there in terms of the BE-4 engine production. Each launch of the Vulcan requires two BE-4 engines. New Glenn requires four BE-4 engines. This is an engine that's been notorious for its delays and difficulties, so there's another big concern there. Finally, if you look at cost, the three Rockets that we do know the cost of are at over $5,000 per kilogram, whereas Rocket Lab's Neutron is planned to launch for under $4,000 per kilogram. It is possible that New Glenn comes in cheaper. We have no way of really knowing that, but even if that is the case, they may have a lot of trouble scaling up their launch cadence as this can be quite tricky and usually the first few years you're only looking at a few launches as you scale that up and get good at it. So because they're on a massive time crunch here, if even a single one of these rockets doesn't hit their deadline, I think Amazon is going to need someone else to step in and fill the void. We also already know that the most frequently launched rocket in the world, the Falcon 9, Amazon's decided they don't want to launch on that. Clearly it has to do with Jeff Bezos and how he has a bit of a feud going with Elon Musk and SpaceX. But whatever the reason, it's pretty clear that the problem is from Amazon's side because we know SpaceX has been willing to launch for competitors in the past. They have launched for OneWeb previously, which is planned to be a competitor for Starlink already. So, Amazon is not willing to launch on SpaceX. They have three unproven rockets they're going to rely on. They're on an extreme time crunch. Rocket Lab is coming in online at the right timeline. Rocket Lab already has a working relationship with Amazon. They're already providing parts for the Kuiper satellite constellation in the form of reaction wheels. There's definitely been discussions there. I'm quite positive that Peter Beck and the team know the requirements Amazon will have to launch their Kuiper satellites, and there's no way they would make their Neutron rocket not capable of launching the satellites for the second biggest constellation in the world for the foreseeable future. Obviously, these constellations need to be constantly replenished as satellites 
re-enter Earth's atmosphere every five years or so. So this would be ongoing business for Rocket Lab. I do think they would have taken that into account and made sure that Neutron would be capable of launching these satellites. Seems pretty clear to me that it's a match made in heaven. Both companies really need each other. Rocket Lab wants to get their launch cadence up as much as possible. And Amazon, I think, is going to be desperate to get their launches off and meet those FCC requirements because the clock is ticking and they haven't gotten anything into space yet. There's been so many delays on every single one of these rockets and we're probably going to see more. So that really sums it up. That's why I'm convinced we're going to be seeing Rocket Lab launch a significant amount of Kuiper satellites in the future. And if and when this does happen, that would be a massive contract for Rocket Lab. I'm sure it would be reflected in the stock price as well. I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know what you think down below. Is this a likely scenario or do you think I'm just kind of out to lunch with this one? Uh, always interested to hear your comments. I hope you've enjoyed this week in the stock market. We've had quite a good run with Rocket Lab and I'm hoping there's more to come. Hope you have a great weekend and I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now. <music>